In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is also the um, feast of the uh, uh, the hour of divine, uh, hour of mercy, hour of grace. I'm sorry, hour of grace. And if you missed it, just go to the internet, type in hour of grace, and then just follow what our Lady of um, Rosa Mystica said, that's why we have the statue of Our Lady of Rosa, Rosa Mystica here today. Um, she is, uh, she promises great blessings. Uh, she promises, um, if, see, she, she has to lead us back to her son. And, and this is what we're going to hear today of how beautiful and magnificent our mother, our queen is. Um, so from the Book of Heaven, Vine 15, December 8th, 1922 on the Immaculate Conception of the Most Holy Virgin Mary. So Louisa says, Louisa begins, I write to obey, and I offer everything to my sweet Jesus. So here, this is what we want. Adam was un disobedient. Adam was unfaithful. And uh, Christ, our Lord, he asks us to be faithful and obedient to him and his church. And, uh, you know, there, we were in a difficult time in, in the history of the uh, the world and the history of the church, um, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Obey what the teachings are um, and get closer to Jesus. You know, offer everything to sweet Jesus. Offer, you know, what you read. Uh, you want to do this one one thing about reading the divine will is what Louisa writes we want to read. We want to participate in this. And she teaches us. So I, I want to read to obey. I want to offer everything to sweet Jesus, uniting myself to the sacrifice of his own obedience. And in order to obtain grace, in order to obtain strength to do what God wants, to do what the Lord, see, if the Lord has uh, predestined us to live at this time because there's great things that are coming, amazing things that are going to happen. Uh, and if you are not close to the Lord, um, it's going to be, frightening it's going to be difficult and you hear a lot of people worried fearful anxious complaining and negative of all this doom and gloom jesus tells louisa that we have to go through this this is the our purification this is the time of purification so as it was the time of noah to purify the earth by the by the flood 
And then the time of purifying the earth with the blood of Jesus, every 2,000 years, Jesus uh, says he purifies the earth. And now we're at that point where fire from heaven is going to purify the earth. And this fire from heaven is symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary, uh, the new Adam, Jesus, the new Eve, Mary, this, this love of God that's been given to us so that uh, we can be filled with this true life of Jesus, this true life of Mary. Um, Jesus says it's so beautiful that we have to be purified. Do you remember what was uh, Elijah? He, he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. And the angel brought the tongue of, of uh, fire to, I mean, the tongues of fire to his lips. And uh, this is something that, that, again, is necessary for us. Uh, we have to be purified to enter into this life. So Jesus calls it a um, a purification like a birth, like giving birth to a baby. The 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 uh, the, the pain is going to get more intense. The pain is going to be more frequent. The sufferings, uh, but then the baby is born. Then the kingdom is here. So Jesus, so Louisa says to Jesus, "Give me the strength to do your what you want for." And now. Jesus, give me your hand, your holy hand, and in the light of your intelligence. The, we have to begin to see things from Christ's perspective. The three powers that God has given us, our intellect, memory, and will, are, uh, you know, a, a lot of people think their human understanding is pretty good. And scripture says the, the wisdom of man is mere foolishness to God. So we have to begin to see things from a divine perspective. Uh, that which uh, Jesus teaches Louisa. Uh, and then and then our memory has to be of Jesus and Mary, not of me, not of you, not of your family, not of your nation. But what was the life of Jesus like? How can we become more like this new Adam, Jesus, and this new Eve, Mary? How can we do this? And now Jesus, she says, give me your holy hand in the, with the light of your intelligence to begin to see things understand things from your perspective, help me write. And we say, Jesus, help me read, read with me. Help me understand this, this language of heaven. Help me enter into this, this new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied about. So she says, I was thinking of the great portent of the immaculate conception of my queen and my celestial mother. And in my interior, she says, I heard Jesus say, my daughter, the immaculate conception of my beloved mother was pro prodigious and fully marvelous. So much so that heaven and earth were astonished and they made feast. So here we have the solemnity of our lady and we're making feasts where we're celebrating. We want to know more about this immaculate conception, this beautiful daughter of God, this beautiful mother of God, this beautiful creature of God. We want to know more about her. And so, God, if you if you really love Our Lady, uh, go to LuisaPicaretta.me and download the, the prodigies of the Blessed Mother. Jesus says, I, as her son, uh, can tell you what my mother is truly like, what she really is about. See, the saints were given inspiration, and the saints wrote from their perspective. Uh, you know, St. Maximilian Colby, St. Bernard. St. Uh, um, uh, Louis de Montfort, they, they wrote such beautiful things about Our Lady. But Jesus says, wait till you hear what I have to tell you about my mother. If you read the prodigies of Our Lady, you, you, every day when you read, uh, it, you can't put it down. Our Lady is so magnificent. And you're going to hear a little, a little bit of it today, of, of how beautiful she is. My mother was prodigious and fully marvelous, so much so that heaven and earth were astonished and made this celebration. The three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, competed with each other. So the Father made this immense sea of power to overflow in Our Lady. Jesus says, I, the Son, uh, I, I made this uh, infinite sea of wisdom flow over Our Lady. And the Holy Spirit gave this uh, overflowing sea of the eternal love of God in, in Our Lady. When Adam fell, it, 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 it broke God's heart. But he knew that he would have uh, his mother, who would then begin again humanity, all of humanity. This is why we love Our Lady so much. 
she's not God. But man, what's our Lord loves her so much. Listen to it. The Father made the power of the Holy, uh, the sea of divine power flow over her. The Son, infinite divine wisdom over Our Lady. The Holy Spirit, the immense eternal love, divine love flowing over Our Lady, converging into one, forming one single sea. This this ocean of divine love, this ocean of of wisdom, this ocean of power, is found in Our Lady. And and that's why on August fifteenth, which is the feast of the divine the divine will. We always have a celebration of the uh, little family of Louisa because this, where Our Lady has gone, the church says, we hope to follow. We hope and pray. Our Christian hope is servitude. It's not pleading. It's we know this is going to happen. We know God is going to do this. So uh, this one single, single seed is converging. This everything, this power, this, 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 this wisdom, this love flows into one seed. And in the middle of this ocean, this immaculate ocean, is the immaculate conception of a virgin. That's where she was born. And Jesus says she is the chosen among the chosen. She is it, the the the, the pinnacle of of beauty of of humanity. Therefore, the divinity the divinity administered the substance of this conception. And not only was this sea the center of life of this admirable and unique creature, the Blessed Mother, but it was all around her, not only to defend her from anything that might shadow her, but to give Our Lady in every instant new divine beauties, new divine graces, new divine power, new divine wisdom, new divine love, new divine privileges, and so on. So this, this when you see the word new, it's, it's of God. This is no one, no no human at that point possess or will ever possess what God breathed into Theotokos, the mother of God. This this beautiful image and uh, image of of Our Lady. She says she said to Saint, she said to Bruno in 1947, Our Lady of Revelation. She said, "I am the daughter of the Father, the mother of the Son, the spouse and temple of the Holy Spirit." So when we say we want to follow a model, we, we follow the saints, but the ultimate of models is Our Lady. When we say we want to um, uh, follow this, this, this new and divine way of holiness, it's the life that Our Lady possesses. And, and God wants us to have his mother as our mother. And as you read the prodigies of Our Lady, which Jesus tells us about his mother, you're going to be floored. And every time you read it, he keeps on expanding your capacity to know a little bit more about how beautiful, how holy, how perfect, how loving Our Lady is. She's, she's, she is, as Jesus says, I'm going to make each of my children my divine masterpiece for God. And she's the ultimate of divine masterpieces. She is it. So in every instant, Beauties, grace, power, wisdom, love, privileges is, is flowing around Our Lady and in Our Lady, defending her from any slight shadow that might be there. And so she says, Jesus says, therefore, her little nature was conceived in the center of this ocean of love, ocean of mercy, ocean of grace, and was formed and grew under the influence of these divine waves of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. So much so, Jesus says, that the triune God, the divinity, did not want to wait, as it usually does with other creatures. The guy's waiting for us. He, he's waiting for us. He said to the apostles, be perfected as your heavenly father is perfect. And when you read the lives of the saints, you see how they struggled for perfection. Well, that's that's here now for us. How? When you read the book of heaven, your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your complaints, your negativity, your doubts just wash away. I mean, they, they just disappear to the point where Jesus says, one day soon, we might be completely free of sin. This is this is what God has planned. That's sanctification. That's to live on earth as it is in heaven. You can't be in heaven if there's any sin. A one venial sin will keep you from heaven. So when the kingdom of God comes on earth as it is in heaven, 
the evil one who has been banished from heaven will be banished from earth. And what does scripture say? No more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. That's our hope. That's our certainty. So we have to be so confident in God that there's no worry, no fear, no anxiety. Oh, but you don't understand, Father. My children are far away from God. Yes, that's true. Your grandchildren are. Your neighbors are. I mean, it's everybody. We are in the final battle. And the evil one wants to destroy all of us, bring, bring us all into hell. But Our Lady says, she's, she's always telling us, get ready for the return of my son. That's why we pray the Holy Rosary. That's why we wear the scapular. It's the clothing of heaven. It's Jesus says, I'm going to clothe my children in divine nobility. So our job is not to be overwhelmed with worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. But our job is to be confident in God. And, and that's why I, I love St. Joan of Arc. She, she says, I am not afraid. Are you afraid? Love casts out all fear, Jesus says. We have to fall more in love with Jesus. Joan of Arc said, I was born for this time. Do you know why you were born for this time? Do you have any idea why you're alive? When you read the book of heaven, Jesus will explain it to you very clearly why you're here and what he expects, the duty that he calls us to. And then uh, she says, because God is with me. There's a 16-year-old girl who, who led an army and defeated another army. I am not afraid. She says, I was born for this time. God is with me. This is what Joan of Arc faced was a, a, a physical human army. We're not facing that today. We're facing principalities and powers. So God has given us the way and the how this is going to happen. And that's, that's the book of heaven. So Jesus says, these the, the little nature of Our Lady was conceived in the center of this ocean of love and was formed and grew under the influence of the divine waves of the Father, Son, and Soul, Holy Spirit. So much so that the divinity did not want to wait, as it usually does with other creatures. So as soon as this noble and unique creature was formed, Jesus says, it, the divine will, the divine uh, will of God, the, the, the triune God, wanted Our Lady's embraces. The little, the little newborn wanted the return of her love, wanted her little kisses to enjoy her innocent smiles. This, this love that God has for his children, you can see it with Our Lady. And when we, when we enter into that time of being perfected as our Heavenly Father is perfect, and that's now, and little by little, we're, we're getting closer and closer to what God has planned. He says, the, the, God wants this from us. If we are, if we are, if we possess the image and likeness of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, there's nothing to worry about. The thing we want is more. What God wants is more. So he says, therefore, as soon as there's a conception was formed, I, God, gave the Blessed, Mary, the Blessed Mother the use of reason. She had full reason when she was conceived. I, God, provided her with all the sciences, just like Adam. Adam knew everything. He knew what every plant was about. He knew what every animal was for. He knew what, what the earth was about, the universe was about. I, God, provided Our Lady with all the sciences. I, God, made Our Lady aware of our divine joys and of our divine sorrows with regard to creation. The joys. Of, of creating Adam in God's image and likeness, the sorrows of Adam saying no to God, and then being banished from, from paradise. See, when, when Adam sinned, uh, he had to go, he had to leave. He had to leave paradise. Why? Uh, because he chose to listen to the evil one. And what does Jesus say? I saw the, the devil fall like lightning to the earth. So that's where, why we've been here for 6,000 years. But the new era has begun. How do we know it's a new era? Jesus says, with this book of heaven, you will, it will prove to you that, that we are in the new era. If you want to know about the illumination of conscience, read the book of heaven. It's going to help you. I, 
I, I, I can't wait to devour everything in this book to know. I want to know everything that Jesus told Louisa. I want to know everything about his, about himself, about Our Lady, about heaven, about earth. Even from our, our ladies, from the maternal womb where our lady was conceived, she came into heaven and at the foot of our throne, God says, to give us her embraces and the return of her love and her tender kisses. Throwing herself as this little baby into our arms, she smiled at us with such a delight of gratitude and thanksgiving as to snatch our smiles. Oh, how beautiful it was to see this innocent, and privileged creature, enriched with all the divine qualities coming into our midst, all love, all trust, without fear, because only sin is what puts distance between creator and creature. You see how we're supposed to be in front of the Blessed Sacrament? No fear. We're supposed to be all love, all trust, all confidence in our God. That's why he calls us to be with him. John, John, the 20, John Paul II, asked that the Eucharistic adoration be in every parish. It's, it's hard to find sometimes. We are called by our lady and our Lord to come to be with him. He would say to Louisa often, Louisa, don't leave me alone. I don't want to be alone. Fear is, is brought about by sin. And sin puts a distance between God and man. Breaking love. Dissolving trust, striking fear. And Jesus says, when our lady came into our midst as queen, as mother, who with her love given by us, trying God, she drew us into her divine, her volition, enrapturing us, put us in feast and celebration, and captured yet more love. And we let her do and enjoy the love that enraptured us, constituting Our Lady Queen of Heaven and Earth. I mean, just that, that, that sentence right there is so amazing. It's so amazing. This is why we love Our Lady. This is why we honor Our Lady. Uh, what God has given to her is so astonishing. And when we fall in love with the Blessed Mother, it pleases Jesus because he is so in love with her. We let her do and enjoy the love that enraptures us, constituting Our Lady Queen of Heaven and Earth. Heaven and Earth exalted and made feast together with us, trying God, and having their queen after so many centuries. The sun smiled its light and considered itself fortunate in having to serve its queen by giving her light. The heavens, the stars, the whole universe smiled with joy and made feast because they were to delight their queen, showing her the harmony of the spheres and of the beauty. The plants smiled and went their, their way to nourish their queen. The earth, too, smiled and felt ennobled, having to provide the residence for its empress and to be trodden on by her steps. Only hell cried. Only hell felt itself losing strength by the dominion of the, this sovereign lady. Now think of the word dominion. We were all lied to, basically, by dominion. Now it's the dominion of Our Lady. There's no more lies. Everything is going to be perfect. Heaven is coming to earth. But do you know what the first act of the celestial creature, when she found herself before the throne of God for the first time, she recognized all the evils for, for mankind and had been, that had been the split between uh, Adam's human will and that of his God, his creator. And Our Lady trembled. And without a moment of hesitation, she bowed her human will. She bound her human will to the foot of, of God's throne. And that's what, when you read, when you read the uh, Virgin Mary in the kingdom, that's one of the things Our Lady teaches Louisa, how to take your human will and bind it to the foot of the throne of God, as Our Lady did as she taught Louisa to do, and she's teaching us. Without ever wanting to know her human will ever again. This is what Our Lady did. And my will bound itself to Our Lady, and because the center of her life, to the extent that 
all the currents, all the relations, all the communications were again opened between God and Our Lady. And there was not one secret in which we, Triune God, did not entrust to the Blessed Mother. This was precisely the most beautiful, the greatest, the most hero heroic act that Our Lady did was to place her human will at our feet. And that act, which made us triune God enraptured and constituted Our Lady Queen of all. Now, Jesus says, do you see then what it means to bind oneself to my divine will and not to know your own human will? So what is your human will? It's when you go to confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is what I thought, what I said, what I did, what I failed to do. And I don't want to live like this. And I want to make a firm progressive amendment to avoid every every what every means of sin, every every little thing of sin. Jesus says, What I'm going to do is that that prayer that you pray, you're going to see fulfilled. That's what he tells Louisa. It's going to be fulfilled. We have a certainty with the divine will. The second act Our Lady was to offer herself for any sacrifice for the love of us. So she would do anything for the love of God. The third act was to render us the honor and the glory of the whole of creation, which Adam had taken away from the triune God by doing his own human will. Even from her maternal womb, she cried for love of us. And seeing us, triune God offended, Our Lady cried with sorrow over guilty humanity. And, and oh, how these innocent tears of Our Lady moved us, trying God, Jesus says, and hastened redemption that was so longed for for 4,000 years. This queen dominated us. This queen bond, bonded us. This bounded us. This queen extracted infinite graces from us. Our Lady made us bend toward mankind, so much so that we could not resist, nor did we know how to resist our Lady's repeated petitions. But where did so much power come from? Where did so much influence over our divinity itself? Jesus says, ah, he says, you have understood. It was the power of our divine will acting in the Blessed Mother, which while dominating her, rendered Our Lady dominator of God himself. Now, what does that mean? He sees himself. The the volume one through volume 10 is what the saints taught us, how to become a divine mirror of Jesus. Volume 11 through volume 19 is how to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. Volume 20 through volume 36 is how to receive the divine inheritance of the Father. How to go back where Adam was before the fall. She says, this is where our lady was. God was, when he looked at Adam, when Adam was created, he was in ecstasy. He saw his child. He saw a reflection of him. Image and likeness came out of the dust. And that's what, he, that's what Jesus is saying. Where did this come from? It's the power of our divine will acting in the blessed mother. And that's what God wants to do with us. Dominated our lady. Rendered our lady dominator of God. He could see that there was, there was a reflection of him. This mere image of him. Moreover, how could we resist so innocent a creature possessed by the divine power, the divine sanctity of our divine will? It would be as though resisting ourselves, Jesus says, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We could see our divine qualities in her like waves uh, did the reflection of our divine sanctity flow over her. Reflections of our divine manister, manners, our reflections of our divine love, reflections of our divine power and so forth, and our divine will, which was their center, attracted all the reflections of our divine qualities. And when you read the Virgin Mary in the Kingdom, Our Lady says that's the final stage, to, to reflect the divine qualities of God as much as a human can possibly possess. That's what he wants to do with us. That's why we're going to become his divine masterpieces for him. Jesus says, the reflection of our divine qualities and made itself the crown and defense of the divinity dwelling within the Blessed Mother. If this immaculate virgin had not had the divine will as center of her life, 
all the other qualities, all the other privileges with which we so enriched her would have been comparatively an absolute nothing. You see how great the divine will is. This is what confirmed, this is what preserved Our Lady's many privileges. Even more, in every instant, it multiplied new ones. It was, it's, there's, for all eternity, we're going to enjoy the beatific vision. That's why we were created. For all eternity, the beatific vision, we're supposed to enjoy. It's supposed to reflect in us. We're supposed to participate in it, not fully, but our God wants us to be like him, image and likeness. That's why he created us. And here we have Theotokos, the mother of God. Here then is the reason for which we constitute our lady queen of all, because when we try and God operate, we do it with reason, divine reason, divine wisdom, and divine justice. Our lady never gave life to her human will. But our most holy divine will was always intact in our lady. How could we say to one other creature, you are queen of heaven, you know, of the sun, you are queen of the sun, queen of the stars, and so on. If in, instead of having our divine will as dominion, she were dominated by her own human will. All of the elements, heaven and sun and earth, would have withdrawn from the rule and dominion of this creature. All would have cried out in their mute language, we do not want her. We want superior to her. We are superior to her because we have never withdrawn from your eternal volition. Adam was the only one who, re who rejected God. The universe didn't. The sunrise and the sunset didn't. I mean, it's, it's Adam rejected. We, and, and this is what the, all of creation would have said to Our Lady if she lived in her human will. We are superior to her because we have never withdrawn from your, your eternal volition. As you created us, so we are. So we, would the sun have cried out with its light, the stars with their flickering, the seas with its waves, and so with all, all the rest. Instead, as soon as they all felt the dominion of this excelling virgin, oh, who almost as their sister never wanted to know her own human will, but only the will of God, not only did they make feasts, but they felt honored to have their queen thronged around her to court the Blessed Mother, to pay tribute to her, the moon by placing itself as a footstool for her feet, the stars as the crown of her head, the sun as the diadem on her head, the angels as servants, the men as though in waiting, everyone honored her, everyone paid to her, their full ex exhibiting of servile compliance. There was no honor, there was no glory that cannot be given to our most holy divine will. Everything participates in this, whether it's in acting in us, trying God, or its own res which is his own residence, or dwelling in the creature, dwelling in the soul. So here's the first one. Adam had it, but he lost it. That now we have the first one who brings back everything that Adam lost. She is the mother. She is the queen of heaven and earth. But do you know the first act of this noble uh, queen was when coming out of the maternal womb, when she opened her eyes to the light of the low world? As her lady was born, the angels sang ditties, these beautiful little songs to the little celestial baby. Our lady remained enraptured. Her beautiful soul left her little body, accompanied by the throngs of angels, and went around heaven, went around earth, gathering all the love that God had spread through the whole of creation and penetrated into heaven. She came to the foot of our throne and offered us the return of the love for all of creation and pronounced her first thank you in the name of all humanity, past, present, and future. That's what Jesus and Mary are teaching us when you pray the rounds of creation. This, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go through all our heaven and earth, looking at everything, recognizing all the divine I love you, and every leaf on a tree, every blade of grass, every grain of sand, every drop of water. Why? To bring it to the throne of God, thanking God, returning the love of all of creation, 
pronouncing our thank you in the name of everyone, past, present, and future. Everything's being repaired. When we pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics and kindle us the fire of your love. That's the divine will. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated. And then you, Holy Spirit, will renew the face of the earth through us. That's the divine will. Everything's being repaired. Everything's being redone. That's our job. That's our duty. As you read the book of heaven, your whole prayer life changes. Yes, we prayed the prayers of the saints for 2,000 years. Now we're going to pray the, pray the prayers that Jesus prayed and Mary prayed. The prayers that Adam prayed before the fall. This is what they taught Louisa. This is why the book of heaven is so amazing. It's to go back to the beginning. What God originally planned. To go back to the true life of Jesus and Mary. This is, this is, this is, this is our life thanking God, praising God, loving God, glorifying God, and worshiping God. Jesus says, when we pray in the name of everyone, past, present, and future, he says this. He says, oh, how we triumph God are so happy in hearing, we felt in hearing the thank you of this little baby queen. And so we confirmed in Our Lady all the graces, all the gifts, as much uh, such as to make her surpass all other humans together. This is, our, our God wants us to begin to understand how much he loves this beautiful woman, this beautiful mother, our mother. When, when he, when, when Adam saw Eve, he said, woman, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. When Jesus on the cross saw his mother, he says, woman, you know, this is, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. It's, it, you have to understand, it's a new beginning for humanity. We waited 4,000 years for redemption to take place. 2,000 years since redemption, where we've learned the basics of the Catholic faith. And now Jesus says, now is the time for sanctification. See, the saints never taught us how to be sanctified. The saints taught us how to be good, holy, and saintly. In a human level, following the, the, the holy humanity of Jesus. Now Jesus says, I want to teach you the interior, my interior life, my mother's interior life. Now it's, it's, it's the first fiat was fiat lux, let there be light. And the universe began. The second fiat was the fiat nihi, let it be done to me as you say. And the incarnation took place. And now the third fiat is here. The fiat voluntas tua. May your kingdom reign in me. This dust on earth as it is in heaven. Breathe in me like you breathe the day heaven. Jesus wants this. Mary wants this. This way, when you right, right from the beginning, she saw the sorrows of the Lord. Her children, God's children, are far from him. And he says, he said to the apostles, when I return, will I find any faith on the earth? You have to remember, the time that we're in is going to prove to Lucifer that he is not going to win. He can't win. But what Jesus is asking us to do is to be what he wanted from the beginning. So the Lord is bringing sanctification here. This great second outpoint of the Holy Spirit that has, has to come upon the earth is close. Re remember, John Paul II went for 27 years, 27 years, telling the world, get ready for the third millennium, get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. St. Padre Pio said, Luisa is a second son that's going to give light and life to everyone and everything. This is, as the sun goes down in the west, a new sun comes up in the east, there will be no more darkness. I always thought that when I was a kid, how come if Jesus has redeemed us and this is, this is it, why, why is there still sin in the world? Why is people are miserable? Why, why all this, the wars and the hatred? Why, why? And, and Jesus wants us to know we had to go through this to get ready to become mature enough to embrace sanctification. And Again, if you think about it, in the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah and King David, none of them 
received the ontological change of baptism. None of them received the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. None of them received the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. Why? It wasn't time. Now is the time. Like Father Bucci would say to us, you know, Father St. Francis was for his time. Luisa is for our time. Luisa de Santo. Luisa the saint. And he said, the church is going to recognize Luisa as the saint of the divine will. The saint of the divine will. And he, we're being called by God. I mean, he saved the best for last. And he's call, we're calling us to begin to live this abundant life. He, he really wants us to begin to live his life in his mother's life. The new Adam and the new Eve. And that this is why. He's given us the newborn, Louisa, the newborn, the firstborn in the divine will. And, and as we read, as we study, as we put this into practice, everything is opening for us. Your spiritual life, once you start reading the book of heaven, your spiritual life is going to change drastically. Read every day for a year. <laughs> and you, you're going to, you, you'll never be the same. You can't be the same. You can't be the same. As you read, as you study, as you put this into practice, as, as it becomes your heartbeat, as it becomes your breath, as it becomes your gazing, you're listening, Jesus, I want you to be alive in me. Jesus says, I want you to be my veil so that I can reign in you. I can gaze in your gaze and speak in your speaking, listen in your listening. I can beat in your heart beating. I can breathe in your breathing. I want this for you. God's image and likeness. To do what God does is likeness. Jesus breathed in my breathing. Take a breath. Jesus takes us at a word. And he is breathing. Beat in my heart beating. It's Jesus beating in our heart beating. This is the divine acts that are happening. Humans can't do divine acts. It's just like Peter on the water. When the boat's tossing and turning in the waves. And there's Jesus walking on the water. And he says, if you're the Messiah, command me to come to you. And Jesus says, come. He walks on the water. Humans don't walk on the water. But this is what he, she's, and he walks to Jesus, and he's looking at the waves, and he starts sinking. He calls out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus grabs him and says, what's wrong with you? Why did you fail? Why did you falter? Where is your faith? That to me is the divine will. Wait to see what God has planned. Little by little by little. To, to want the divine will, you conceive Jesus in your heart. That's the very first thing. And then every act that you do, you one with Jesus. Jesus gazed in my gaze. Jesus breathed in my breathing. Jesus washed the dishes as I washed the dishes. Jesus drive when I'm driving. Everything that you do is another molecule added to that life of Jesus. He wants you to give birth to him. And it's not the birth that Our Lady gave. But he wants to gaze in your gaze and listen in your listening, speak in your speaking. And if Jesus is there, your family's at peace. Your family's filled with joy. Your family's filled with happiness. But if you're there, you're, you're in confession the next week. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's like Jesus is showing us. He's going to show us the way and the how this is going to happen. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus says this, throwing herself, our lady throws herself into our arms. She's delighted with us trying God, swimming in this ocean of all contentments, being embellished with new beauty, with new light, with new love. See, think, see it as God's beauty, God's light, God's love. And she pleaded once again for all of mankind with tears, praying to us, trying God to let the eternal word descend in order to save her brothers and sisters. But as she was doing this, our divine will let her know that she had to descend to the earth. That she's in heaven. I mean, she, she, as soon as she was conceived, she was in heaven. To, to you have to descend to earth. And soon she left our contentment and our joys and departed in order to do what? To do our divine will to live in our divine will, to possess our divine will. This powerful magnet of our divine will was now residing on earth in this newborn queen. No longer did the earth appeal appear alien to us. 
No longer did we feel like striking it and making use of our divine justice. God has to give everybody what they want. He gave the devil hell. Now he's asking, what do you want? I have to give it to you. Hurry, make, make a decision because time is come to, coming to an end. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of this era. The new era is coming. We no longer felt like striking it and making use of our divine justice. We had the power of our divine will in which this innocent baby held back our arms, smiled at us from earth, and turned justice into grace, into graces, and sweet smile, the sweet smile of our lady. To the extent that unable to resist this sweet enchantment, this eternal word, Jesus Christ, accelerated his course to come to earth. The prodigy of my divine will to you, Oh, prodigy of my divine will. It's now Jesus is speaking here. He's saying to us, listen to what I'm going to say, Jesus says. The prodigy of my divine will. To you, divine will, everything is due. Do. Through you, divine will, everything is accomplished. And there is no greater prodigy than my most holy divine will in the creature, in the soul. And now, in, in, and now God wants to bring this divine will to full life in all of us. There's only one person that's going to get in the way, and that's you. If you say yes, fiat, let Mary said that. When the angel came to Our Lady and said, you're going to be the mother of God, she says, how can this be? She says, I, I made a life of virginity. Joseph made a life of virginity. How are we going to, how can I become the mother of God? What do I need to do? And the angel said, it'll be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And our lady said, fiat me, let it be done to me as you say. This is what we have to do as well. How is this kingdom of God going to come on earth? It's going to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. This great outpouring of the Holy Spirit is coming. And that's why it's going to be good for some, our lady said, but bad for most. Those that are in love with God, it will be ecstasy. Those that are not, it'll be wailing and grinding of teeth. It's very close. It's very close. And Jesus has given us the book of heaven. And he says, to prove that the kingdom is coming soon, read the book of heaven. Watch what I'm going to do. So may the blood that flowed upon the word of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa. And we pray that this prayer becomes God's command in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.